right, let's see. So it says I, I, I thought I was starting at 12 o'clock, and then apparently I hit go live, and I was doing the dishes, and I got an email saying that we were live. So anyone, how, 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 anyway, how is everyone doing today? All right, so a couple things we're going to do is I'll start off by saying just a reminder to everybody who already has my bundle list. Today is the last day. You have, If you have my bundle, which has all my courses, all my blues courses, and all the sheet music, all the video and everything, I'm giving you an opportunity to do the five-week course that starts September 20th. It's a practice with the courses kind of session. We're going to start with Blues Volume 1, and we're going to do two licks a week okay so you're going to be able to transpose into all keys blues example one i'm sorry blues course one after five weeks and so i'll send out a video each week that has both keys two of the keys from blues volume one and then um I'll, i will also do a live uh each week at least one live but i've already been we have 25 people in our group so far who have the courses and who have signed up for the list and uh, and I've been emailing you guys every day with practice tips and suggestions as we get ready for the course. And it's just a really cool community. So, all right, so here's what we're going to do today. Is we're going to use one of the examples from Blues Volume 4, which I need to, I think it's important to also say, the reason, reason I decided to say you need to have the bundle to, to be a part of this course it's a free course and over, you know, six hours of training just for the free course. But also, you know, we have o over four, like three and a half, four hours, whatever, of, uh, of blues material. And the reason is because we're going to do blues volume one, but also I pull licks in our practice sessions from all of the courses. And so I want you guys to be able to have the sheet music and uh, everything that goes along with all of the volumes. So the first example we're going to do today is I'll go back over this blues. This is from volume four, which hasn't even been released yet, but I've done all the examples and I've been practicing all the licks and trying to make sure that they feel good for people who might have the bundle courses because um, I think it's really important to make the licks accessible and the, they feel good to you. The very first one from volume four is the Dwight lick, which is this. And we have new bass lines coming for the volume four. And the first example of the bass line would be starting with this one and two and three and four and one and two. Awesome, Andy and Vicky. Good to see you guys. Let's go ahead and we're going to dig in to this example. So as we learn the blues scale, let me just do a, a quick reminder for anybody uh, who, who is interested in transposing and making sure that you understand the theory, be theory behind all of this is that the very first thing we do when we learn music is we learn about our major scales, or it's one of the things we learn. And, and this is, for instance, C major, right? You have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, all white notes. And you need to learn the fingering of the major scale, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. But then you need to learn the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the reason this is important is because you have to learn how to say, okay, well, here's my major scale. And I say, all right, one, two, three, I'm going to flat that note. So flat third, not regular third, but flat the third. So now I have one flat third of the C major scale, four of the C major scale, sharp four, and five. So we have this. Okay, that's the first five notes of the C blues scale. And then if I do flat seven and one, now you have the whole blues scale from C major. And the reason this is important is because as we learned all of our major scales, I'll just pick one more, we'll do the key of G. So I have to know G major. Hey Rick, how's it going, man? Rick is a part of our, our group. Rick, it's good to see you and um, Rick, has already emailed me and say he's dedicating a certain amount of time to go through the blues courses and the jazz course, so, courses. So I know uh, Rick's been tuning into our, our private group, so thank you for that. All right, so G major, we have to learn our G major scale. And after we learn that, we say, okay, well, G has one sharp and this F sharp. So I'm going to do one flat three, four of the G major scale, sharp four 
flat se- I'm sorry, five flat seven one. So that's how we get the notes of our G blues scale. And then uh, we'll do we'll do the four chord of the C major scale is the four fourth chord of a simple C blues is F. And if I'm going to learn uh, my F major scale, F has one flat and it's B flat. And this is important because we're going to learn the F blues scale. One flat three of an F major scale, four sharp four, five flat seven and one. I like the fingering one two three. One, two, three, four for F. Same thing uh, for G, actually. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Let me do that again. So for, um, it's the same for, for F and for G. And then C is one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Yeah, so let me, let me say that again because I said that wrong. The fingering for an F blues scale is going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And for G and for C, we're going to do one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And this is really important, and that's why I go over fingerings over and over because once you learn the fingerings and once you learn the theory behind all of this, and then you learn how to practice by repetition and focus. You'll be able to do anything you want to do. Okay, so we've done a little bit of theory for today, and I always break the theory down in all the courses and everything. And you can always email me, Bob at iMusic Academy, if you have any kind of questions. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn the Dwight Lick, which is in Volume Four. It's so simple, but it sounds so good. We go root of a C blues. We're going to go root up to the tritone or the sharp four. That's a really cool interval. And here's the lick. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So in our left hand, we're just going to do quarter notes right now. All we're doing is C, G to C, A. A very basic blues pattern. But it's very important. So here we go. One and two. Slow it down. One and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one. Okay, go ahead and put in the chat if that seems very easy to do and that you understand it. And I'm going to keep talking because I'm on a little bit of a delay. But the first thing I'm thinking is one sharp four. I get that tritone, and notice my fingering is one, four, three, two, three, two, three, and I go down to flat seven and one, so down to the B flat. So. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transpose this to F because we're going to go to the simple four chord of an F blues. And the first thing I know is because I know my F blues scale, I'm going to go one sharp four. And normally in F major, we have a B flat, but we're going to sharp that. We're going to get that tritone, and we have this four to flat three. And then instead of F, we're going to go down to the flat seven of an F scale and then up to the root, which is F. I promise you guys, if this is, feels really easy to you, I want you to hang in there because we're going to go, we're going to add a couple of more licks, and then we're going to show you how, we're going to continue to learn how to practice and put it all together. So here we go. basic C blues, I'm going to go up to the G chord, which is the 5 chord of a C blues, and I'm going to do the same thing. So what do we have to know? Our G major scale, I'm going to go root up to the sharp 4, 4, and then there's my flat 3rd, B flat. I go down a whole step to get my flat 7 and back to the root, so we have this. All 
right, now here's something fun that I did this morning. In Blues Volume 4, that hasn't even been released yet, has this idea of this New Orleans feel, right? One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And so kind of a second line kind of, I, uh, it could be like an island groove or an island feel or a New Orleans feel. But it's basically just this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And what makes this really nice is that offbeat, right? One and two and. The end of two has an offbeat. One and two and three and four and two and three and four and and to play this bass line here's what I love about it is that it's just a triad right C E G and then all you have to do is practice this over and over with the fingering five three and one one and two and three and four and so let me play this um, for my email list people anyone who's on any of my email list I think I sent this out yesterday uh, it's just the the sheet music to this lick but it's cool to have the sheet music to all of these licks because not only does it show the correct fingering, but also you help it helps you line up the notes uh, along with the bass line. So um, email me if you don't have access to that, I can't find it, whatever, and I'll email it to you. But let me just play it really slowly first, the way we just did it, and then I'll show you the new way. So. if I play this different feel. feels right does that feel like uh, that's doable for you guys does that feel difficult does it feel good I'd like to know and then the next thing we're gonna do is after we learn this we're gonna go over some simple patterns that go along with the blue scale and uh, I had this idea last night I was thinking about all the different emails that have come in recently and you guys are telling me about focusing in on your practice strategies and really wanting to commit to getting better but but sometimes we don't know exactly how to do it because there is so much information out there right and there's so many people you guys probably if you uh, a musician and you play piano you you probably signed up to a thousand lists and I get it and there's some great teachers out there uh, difficult okay and you probably got a thousand emails like from me and other people right they say hey got get this and get that whatever it doesn't matter it, um, what you're signed up for or what courses you get the truth is there are lots of people you can choose from and uh, I support anybody who wants to study with anybody but wh whatever you do you have to focus in on the practice strategies because that's the way you get better and that's the way you build confidence right so let's just say for instance that this is one of the licks that I'm gonna learn and practice This is one of the repetition things. Well, also, we already talked about this morning in the private group thing of, yes, you can play the first five notes of the blues scale, right? And you can play the, you can also go down three half steps and get to an A blues scale, right? So these work hand in hand together. So if I'm playing a C blues, I can go down three half steps. I'm just going to use the first four notes of the uh, A blues scale, right? So now you have this. Two and
so I can mix and match this A blues scale any way I want. And notice that my fingers are already over every single note of this A blues scale, right? You have A. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Rick. You're nailing it there. And that is uh, what I teach in all of my, not only my courses, but when I teach uh, lessons online and I do videos, I'm even playing this way faster than I teach it. Uh, not only in the videos, but just whenever I'm working with students and, and when I'm practicing myself. Uh, Rick, you are absolutely 100% correct. What I do if I'm practicing anything, not only do I believe in repetition and, and then learning how to, you know, you have different patterns, right? For instance, this, and you're working on being creative with that pattern, but also going in super slow motion practice. I do this all the time. And I'm not going to get into it right now, but like when I'm playing the piano and I'm practicing, I think in big old, big shapes and chords and things, but I'm not thinking like right hand and left hand. I'm thinking of a picture of what I want to do and what I want to paint. And when you practice super slowly, you can let all the ideas that are in your imagination start to come out, but it comes out by you learning how to practice slowly, right? We have this. So the Dwight Lick. Maybe the first lick, right? hearing it in my mind. Maybe this C6 lick that we've been working on, right? So we go, and I sent this out to my group. We haven't even started the dang course yet, right? September 20th is coming, but we're going through these licks of Blues Volume 1, and uh, this is the way, this is the way you get it, guys. You build up a vocabulary, and we did this yesterday or day before, and we say one, and two, and then three, and four. Maybe the Dwight Lick. That's just a slight variation, right? I didn't do this. I just did uh, the Dwight Lick. Now maybe I want to do just the blues scale. And I'm going to come down with the blues scale. Dee, da, 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 okay, I'll just do the blues scale right now. Playing the blues scale and playing in rhythm is really important because it, it's, you, it's you're doing a lot of ear training when you're doing stuff like this. Dee, da, 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 da. And notice that my fingering is exactly the way I told you it was earlier when we started the video. One, two, three, four, one, three, four, right? to the Dwight lick, right? I'm going to slow it down even more. Here we go. Maybe I just need to 
stay there for a while. The fingering is exactly the same every time. do right there all right if you're enjoying this make sure you like the video and please say hello in the chat it's really great to hear from you guys that I don't care if you're in the course already or not but I'd love to hear from you and let me know if this is helping you guys okay so here's what I just did I did the blue scale coming down right well, the, the thing that I just did is I went up. So I went up to the flat third of the scale. So as if I was starting the, the um, if I, as if I was starting the blue scale up the next octave, so higher up. Now, once you get to here, you actually get this pattern right here, which is a four note pattern. And we talk about it in, I think, Blues Volume 2, where you have this idea of you're going up the blues scale, but then you start on the next octave up, but you have this minor third of a C major scale, and you have the flat seven, and you have the fifth. So listen to just this sound of these four notes with the fingering one, two, three, four. Listen to this. Focus now. I'm gonna do the Dwight lick. So now I just did the octave, and what I really wanted to do was this. That's what I'm gonna do this next time. So I've learned my blues scale, and now I'm gonna do this example from Blues Volume Four that, that talks about how you can use triplets and everything. But it's the all it is is the blues scale, nothing else added to it. And I'm going to do four, three, two, one. And I go back to this pattern of four, three, two, one, right? I love, love, love the idea of people being able to play the first five notes of the blues scale in all keys. And we're going to get to do that when we, uh, you know, study through this course. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to do the Dwight lick. And then I'm going to go... Uh, up to the E flat and just come down the blues scale for now in rhythm. So we have That feels good again. say this this is important so we've been learning the we learn it in C and then we went to F and we also learned it in G right but there's some, this is an important thing to know is yes it's good to be able to play whatever lick or idea you're working in into the different chords of the blues but this ultimately is a C blues and so the C blues first five notes even when there's tension when you go to F you could still use uh, the C blues and you'll mostly stay in the context of the C blues notes um, yes you can outline the G7 notes and the, the same thing with the F7 but just know that you want to kind of mostly keep the idea of the C blues scale as you improv so I'll just show you what I mean by that so if I'm just doing the Dwight lick right now I'm gonna do it for one more time now listen to this so even though I'm F, all those notes are going to work. That's a, technically a flat 9 of F and a flat 7. Or listen to the A blue scale. I'm going to go back to the Dwight lick if I go to C. Now, 
even though I'm going to G, I'm going to do the blues scale starting on the E flat up there. I'll do that again. So, you see how that works? Uh, let me know in the chat if you understand that. Nice. Yeah, Rick. Uh, very much will start to come together. And really, are, are we really even doing anything yet other than two ideas, right? You had the blue scale or the first four notes or five notes of the blue scale. So, let's, let's keep going with this idea. So, playing the blue scale coming going all the way down works but i did a um a variation of it this morning let me remember what i did okay that's what i think i did okay so so this is it coming down right that's just the blue scale coming down and and even just then i did like a repeat of the f sharp so you can do so you definitely want to be able to mix it, mix and match it, but do it in rhythm, and we will be practicing this very slowly. But watch what happens. What do, watch what I just did. I went instead of just coming, coming down. I went middle finger on the root C up to third. Let's see. I think that's what I did. So I did root minor third flat seven. Da, 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 boom. Okay, so here's the way you're going to get this idea. You have three, sorry, root up to the third, down to the flat seven. So I'm skipping the order around. Da, 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 da. And you want to get, here's the trick, is getting your fourth finger on to the tritone. Da, 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 da. I want to make sure I get there, and then I go four. And instead of coming down E flat C, I like the idea of C and ending on the tension that you get from having that minor third or technically like sharp nine sound, which sounds really good. So listen to this. Instead of just playing this, which sounds good, listen to the subtle difference. Tell me in the chat if you like that sound. Awesome. 
Uh, what's up, Dan? Good to see you, man. Dan is also in the group. Thank you guys for joining in. And Dan, that's a that's a you you're absolutely right on that. Which it's so neat to think of. Um, sometimes I, I think in the Blues Volume Two, we have a lick that goes something like I don't even remember how it starts, but basically it's like. So it has that the idea of that sharp nine voicing is kind of that train sound, right? Yeah, very cool. Awesome. All right. Any questions before we keep going? It's good to see all the people who are in my uh, in the little practice group that we have. All right, let me uh, it, it, just put your questions in as if you think of anything. But uh, I want to talk about one of the licks in Blues Volume 1 that we actually did yesterday in our live training. Uh, actually, it wasn't a live training. I just sent you guys the video. But this idea of within the octave, uh, th this is a great ear training lick, um, I call it, because it just starts out very simple, and it goes octave, flat seven of the scale, six, which is always a really good sound, flat six, five, sharp four. So I do this. Once I get to here, it's the first five notes of blues scale. Oh, Dan, this is a great question. Okay, so here's the way it's going to work. Uh, for anyone who I need to say this too for anybody who has my courses the blues bundle and there's a special link right now it's like forty two ninety nine on the website I promise you it's worth every penny and more and if for some reason you weren't happy I would refund your money if there's a financial need we'll make a, a way for you to be in the course I really want people to be a part of this okay so you already have the material of course for all the licks but you also have some additional things from Blues Volume 4 and things like that, like like we did today with the Dwight Lick. But, uh, Dan, here's how it's going to work, is that um, each week you're going to get one long video of Blues, let's say Blues Example 1 and Blues Example 4, and it'll be in all keys. And we talk about slow motion learning. That's what you get with this. It'll be every single lick and every single key in detail and you have a whole week to learn the first two licks that we that we have and we're going through all 10 over five weeks so two uh, licks a week but also there are the live trainings with me uh every you know every at least twice a week um and you already know if you're if you're already signed up for the class i've been giving you guys free training every single day right uh, just checking in with you guys and say, hey, here's a quick free practice session. And I think it is important to say this, too, is um, like most music teachers, you know, this is really important to say is that I do have students that pay me the same rate that I uh, pay other people if I have a lesson. It's $60 for a an hour lesson with me, and I have some uh, students that take a 30 minute lesson every week and some that take uh, you know an hour lesson every week and some that take an hour lesson every two weeks but I normally charge exactly what I were to pay other people uh, if I were taking a lesson from them but this is all free for you guys because it's my way of not only giving back but I I think we're on to something practicing together and learning how to learn how to practice. And so I love what we're building here at iMusic Academy, and that's because of you. And so that's why I'm trying to over deliver and get you guys to wherever you want to go. Um, so, Dan, when we do, yes, I use Zoom and um, all kinds of different ways in terms of I do Vimeo, I do private YouTube links as well. So, but yes, we will be doing a Zoom, and uh, it'll be fun. I think we have 25 people up. We had a guy sign up last night. And uh, anyway, all right, other questions? 
uh, and I'm going to continue with this one lick here real quick. I'm going to go till at least 1245 today and maybe a little longer just to kind of try to help answer any questions that you guys might have and also we're getting some practicing in so all right so look we go C up to C that's the octave flat seven six flat six and then once you get to here you're in this shape that I want you guys to get in right I love making sure you know the first five uh, notes of the blues scale and I can't remember if it was uh, Dan or if it was William that emailed me last night saying that they had learned blues scale some blues scales and things but they've always done the fingering of one two three and you know they would never thought of these ideas of the pattern of the first five notes and that's just something I mean I'm sure a million other people have come up with but I've always had this idea of of making sure you're in the right shape so when I teach the first five notes of the blues scale I practice I teach making sure that you're hovering over each note right so that when I go up here an octave up you see how my hand automatically goes to that the only reason I can do that is because I've done this so many times right I know my hand naturally wants to go to this shape and the same thing will be for you too so I do sometimes routines where I'll say okay today uh, let's let's just say we practiced four days a week right 12 keys to get through if you said all right uh, today I'm gonna do the three keys I'll do C C sharp and D now this is where you get focused and this is how you get better right is learning good practice strategies you say all right so maybe I'm gonna warm up with the first five notes of the blues scale maybe I'll turn on a backing track C you know C blues on YouTube but notice what I'm doing here this is like Hannon exercises right and just nice and slow and maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll turn it around a little bit but the main thing is making sure you're, you're hovering over each note all right so that's one key I knocked out already for today I'm gonna go up a half step now there's a subtle difference between C and C sharp you notice how I move into the keys a little bit I'm up into the keys now I just played the Dwight lick in D flat right now if I play my first five notes of the D blues sorry D flat blues scale I know that I'm gonna go one to the tritone and then I come down and I have to go down a whole step and now I can play the Dwight scale Dwight lick in D flat okay so the first key that I practiced was C and then I went up and I move into the keys a little bit and I'm gonna play the first five notes of the D flat blues scale and then we're going to do one other key and this will knock out my Monday three keys right we go three keys for four days that's 12 keys and we're good so D fits under the hand really nicely one two three four five and for all 12 keys I'm going to use the same exact fingering okay so for the Dwight lick here I'm doing in D I go to the tritone now go down a whole step all right yeah Dan all right let's talk about that okay it's it's tough in B and in G flat and I'm, and I'm glad I love the the uh, feedback and the questions and and your, what you're good at and what what are some uh, weaknesses so let's talk about B now the only reason B is going to feel a little bit different different is because we haven't spent enough time uh, practicing it and learning how to get the shape down okay so I'm gonna do C again now I'm gonna go down to B okay now as, as I play B it, it's all about where you put your hands you notice I'm into the keys a little bit right
So I'm here, and I'm into the keys. And sometimes you can even move forward a little bit as you go. Now I do have a, a classical background. So I studied, I had the privilege uh, and honor of studying with a really, really gifted classical pianist. And there were lots of things I learned from my classical studies. And one of those is getting up into the keys. And, and uh, sometimes you move. I'm a little I'm a, a little bit back, but as I go in, I move forward a little bit, right? And so I'm learning the shape, and it's an awful sounding chord when you play it all together. Okay, now, uh, Dan, if you if you spent the next three or four days and you just said, all right, today I'm going to do C and B. C is going to be your comfort key. Let's just say I did that for, for a whole minute, got your timer out, and now I'm going to go super slow-mo, okay, and now I'm going to put the bass line with it, right, I have B and F sharp, fingering's going to be saying 5-2 to 5-1, that's pretty easy, right? chord of B. Now I'm going to practice the five note pattern. If you practice that for one minute for five days. And now you've practiced that, guess what you're going to do now? You're going to go back to your comfort key. All right, so B, you're going to get down no problem. Uh, uh, the next thing we're going to do is address the uh, F sharp, okay? So let's do F at first, okay? F fits under the hand nicely. We're going to get that shape, and I'm going to check to make sure and see where my hands are spread out there, and I kind of get the shape. That feels good to me. Maybe today would be Wednesday, and I'm going to go, all right, here's my shape. Put my timer on and practice slow-mo minutes. Now I'm going to go up a half step. The first thing I'm going to start to notice is there are two black keys in the in this key, right? F sharp and C sharp. And notice where I am, uh, Dan, up into the uh, up into the keys, right? That's the only way you're going to play this. sense all right make sure you like this video if you're enjoying this I see we have seven likes and I love the comments coming in love the questions coming in I'm gonna get a quick sip of water and I'm looking for the next question and we'll keep practicing and we're actually we're gonna work on transposing that uh, octave exercise that I just showed you the reason I love this this right here because it shows you lots of possibilities. Again. When I, what happens when I go to F, flat seven, so I do flat seven, six, flat six, and then guess what? I'm at the First five notes of the blues scale, right? Back to C, same thing. Now watch what happens when I go to G. It, it comes down to practicing and deciding how you're going to practice and what you're going to practice, right? 
and there's a lot that we have pulling on us for uh, different things. That's yeah, that's cool, Rick. Um, so let me let's just talk about practicing for just a second, okay? I want you guys to know that I've been getting a lot of emails exactly what uh, Dan you're talking about and Rick what you're talking about about practicing and there's so much out there and you guys are working on different things jazz and uh, all kinds of things uh, this this is something uh, that is uh, speaking of jazz you guys just reminded me for those of you who do not have my bundle yet I, you just know that on at imusicacademy.com, I created uh, a bundle up there, and I put it up like two days ago, and it has the three uh, blues courses, but I also included the jazz course. Now, why is this important? Because blues and jazz, especially the way I'm teaching you, works perfectly with jazz. The first example of my jazz course talks about this five note pattern and then within the second or third lesson we're talking about two note voicings using uh, using these same concepts right so you're learning about playing the blues scale but also learning about what it's like to play in a jazz trio right I start off with two note voicings for the left hand and then we go to three note voicings so then you're you're actually playing three note voicings for jazz right and I even do licks like this so you're playing jazz really hip jazz voicings and by the fifth lesson in that free course that I'm giving away is I, I show you how to play Bill Evans type voicings over a walking bass line and then um, I even have a longer jazz course that I've given away to several of my students that shows you how to incorporate uh, the blues along with the jazz. It's like a 45 minute video and the video that I'm giving away it's like five lessons to playing jazz but no kidding it's walking bass on the fifth lesson and it's like a 25 minute video and I I think you guys will enjoy that. That is also coming free as just my way of, of giving back. Okay um, so back to this idea of practicing uh, as we get really strategic with our practicing, you, you, you're going to have 10 licks, right, from Blues Volume 1, and we're going to learn how to focus in together. Like the very first example we, we've been working on is this, right? One vocabulary idea. And all you have to know is the other fingering, right? It's a hammer-on. So you're either going to have the hammer on key, D flat, or the slide key. So maybe I'm going to do this Dwight lick. scale just coming down G7 
so I'm just thinking right there, I was just thinking w either this idea, the Dwight lick, or I was thinking the C6 lick that we just did, or I was thinking the first four notes of the A blues scale. And the only other thing I did was getting this blues scale flowing. Let's go over one more time this idea of turning around this blues scale idea. Sorry. I kind of like that. slower again now if I was going to take this and transpose this uh, what would I have to do well the first thing I, I noticed the lick starts on C the root goes up to the third and it comes to that down to the flat seven the fifth and then the sharp four so getting to this tritone is going to be the important thing so when I go up to F I'm going to go root third finger up to the minor third and I, now I have to get down to the tritone and I go tritone four and up to the minor third Same fingering as C. All right, let me go to the G. Let's do the same thing. Middle finger on the root. All right, now uh, I want to take a minute. I'm going to take a drink of water, but Dan, Rick, uh, Vicky, anyone else, I'd be curious to know how your practice strategy is going so far. And uh, I'd like to also know if you guys, like all of us at times, struggle with practicing or you feel like you're not improving as fast as you want to. i uh, just curious. In the meantime, I'm going to practice these strategies that I'm showing you guys. So what I just did there, guys, is I don't remember which blues example, which course this is, but I love this idea, again, to the tritone. It's such a neat sound, right, the tritone. And all I'm doing is holding the top note, the C, and I'm doing, that's one way you can do it. So I'm coming down the blues scale. Notice that I'm holding the top note. go to F listen the reason that works is because that's the fifth of F that's the flat nine that's the flat seven and there I'm going five root tritone four so I'm still using the blues notes right stay on on the same leg I did that wrong. Instead of just doing that, I did. Okay, uh, something, let's see.
with the substitutions and things. Yeah, I think that just comes with, um, that's actually a, 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 another video that I'm, I'm actually been working on concepts is for people to use what scale, <laughs> for instance, using the altered scale, right? And where to use it. Uh, for instance, if I'm playing, uh, I'm, I'm, well, this is not this is not for this for today's lesson, but the idea of when we play a flat nine, you use uh, half step, whole step, diminished, and if you use sharp nine, you can do that as well. But um, there are other concepts like if I'm um, certain aspects where I'll use the altered scale, but if I use a C nine, I don't use the diminished half step because it, it clashes with those notes so we have to learn how to do use the mixolydian scale so there are all kinds of little things you can do that but uh, that makes a lot of sense dan and to me there's a balance between learning ideas and practicing things like scales and licks and all that but also learning music right or playing music and building up a repertoire I also think that's really important for people who are a little bit more advanced but th that's a great question uh, but yeah I love like tritone substitutions all day long there's so many kind of cool things you can do there all right anybody else have any questions uh, there's something else that I'm gonna keep going over we have a, we have about seven more minutes and then I'll I'll jump off but ask away if you have any questions but there's something that I did earlier that I want you guys to hear is that you know we're dealing with blues scale right and doing all these C blues ideas but we didn't talk about the major third which is such an important sound right so I also have been working on simple things to do to help people hear the major third sound, right? So you have... Okay, um, something else related to that. Oh, I know what it was. Man, I'm like, my mouth is dry. Let me get some more water real quick. Okay, so let's finish up by doing this simple lick. You guys know that example 10 of Blues Volume 1, which is one that we're going to transpose in all keys, is a simple third up to the, up, up to the root, right? And you do one five, and all you do, and this works in every single key, is you do one five one half step down, and you, then you go to the ninth up to the flat seven, right? And then you could come down. You end on a flat seven and five. You do the same thing, so I'm going a little bit major blues. This is so good for ear training, guys. The next thing I'm going to do is G, uh, B up to G, third up to the root, and then I'm already on the third of F.
So here we go. Just did the tritone leg. If I'm uh, if I'm practicing very very slowly, which is my favorite things to do, you can get all of your ideas out uh, and go as slow as you need to go. For some of you, it might be right hand only. That's totally cool. Or it might be left hand only. But you want to make sure that you're using whatever is going on in your head regarding these ideas. I want you to take it really slowly. Seven, right? Any questions before I sign off? Just let me know if you've enjoyed this and send me an email, leave a comment again on um, what you enjoyed just in the comment section and then how I can help you guys moving forward. My deal of all of this ends tonight for those of you who don't have the course. If you do have the course, please sign up. It's free for you. If you don't, go to... Um, iMusicAcademy.com and I think it's $42.99 until midnight tonight and if you don't want to do any of this at all I have tons of free stuff on YouTube so don't worry about it I'll do one minute of answering any questions and then I'll sign off but you guys have been awesome and I love the interaction so thank you for that Awesome. I don't know what to think about that, Dan. <laughs> hey, I will say this, is that um, last night, this is just uh, extra info for anyone who's interested, is I started going through... Uh, all the things from Blues Volume 4, right? And I'm th sitting here thinking that there's some really cool licks in Blues Volume 4. There's some easy licks, but there are also some really challenging licks, which is very cool, but it inspired me to do something totally different, and I actually started working on 
uh, a new thing just for later. Um, all right, so, so, all right, so let me tell you guys what inspired me um, to do that. Let me show you, tell you one thing from Blues Volume 4 that you guys will like for sure. Is I just showed you this lick where you're doing that. But uh, o over this idea of this bass line with the New Orleans feel, right, we have... I did that wrong. So you have, you have to change the fingering on the last part. So this, is, even just this one thing is perfect for um, transit, for ear training. So listen to this again. And then all you have to do is the same fingering all the way down, except for when you get to the bottom, you do two cross over and then three up to the root and then you're back where you started. Isn't that cool? Okay, so that's a, that's a nice thing. But anyway, as I'm going through all these licks, I'm thinking, you know, I have a lot of people that are part, of, that have my courses and, uh, and I get lots of emails of what they're working on. But I, I started thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know if, um, if, this would be helpful or not but i started thinking how can i get people very comfortable in playing the blues if they're kind of more on the beginner side and so i literally had this idea yesterday of really coming up with very playable but doable licks that sound great uh and you can you can play them with um, even as a beginner uh, and I'll just give you an example so I was thinking about the blues scale for instance and just simple ways of like let's say you're starting on the flat seven right and you do major a third up to the minor a third so this would be one of the more advanced ideas which is not adva that advanced right you could go major there the first time. Now I'm going to go to the flat third, uh, F. You could go there and then back to the first one. the idea but then I said okay well what about something like these so so learning these little shapes would be good and also the first four notes of the blues scale would be a great place for people to start the first five notes of the blues scale and and even there's some simple triad shapes which i won't even do right now but um i think that there's a way to create simple concepts that that even for absolute beginners can can start doing this stuff so anyway all right guys you got 30 seconds for questions and then we'll sign off. been fun. I can't believe it's been over an hour. Vicky or anybody who's still listening, I have a quick question. So lately on my videos, it sounds kind of computer, like I'm getting a chorus effect. 
Yeah, absolutely. The the um, awesome. Thank you so much. The the New Orleans style is absolutely um, the good. The good thing is it works with all of these licks. I promise you, it's amazing how different the feel is. Just even from blues example one, right? If we did. doing anything right different I'm just too slow now I'll do that other lick ideas work even even these kinds of blues licks and even this so yeah so I'm not doing anything like you could play that um, which I think it might be in, in volume two, and you go... Uh, or you can do... Get that bass line down where you're doing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four. Well, it's been a big battle. I still think it sounds computerized, but I, I don't know what to do. It's better than it was. I think the emails that I've been sending out to everybody have been really computerized sounding and there's some kind of weird setting going on.